Hello everyone, welcome back to another session. Today we are going to start with chapter 4, grade 6 CBSC, part 1, what books and burial tell us. So burial basically means the act of uh, burying someone. So the topics that we intend to cover today are one of the oldest books in the world. We'll talk about that. Then we'll also talk about how historians study Rig Veda, what exactly are Vedas. And cattle, horses and chariots, what stories do they have to share with us? So let's get started. First, we are going to know more about Vedas. So as the name suggests, Vedas are the largest religious books. When it comes to Hinduism, they have the religious text. Mostly they, uh, they have a lot of hymns uh, in the form of conversation. And it's written in Vedic Sanskrit. So that's the language. It's quite different from the Sanskrit that we happen to learn nowadays. It's uh, different from what we have. It's uh, the Vedic Sanskrit. And we find Vedas in four parts. The first one is Rig Veda, the oldest one. We'll study about it today. Then the second one is Yajur Veda. Moving on to the third one, that is Samved. And the fourth one is Atharv Veda. So these are the four Vedas, which can, which have a lot of mantras written in it, which have a lot of hymns written in it. And the first one to be written ever was Rig Veda. It's the earliest, earliest religious text that we have from ancient India. So let's get started and know more about this chapter. So the chapter starts with Mary. Not that Mary, Mary, the proposal. Mary is a small girl, a cute girl, as innocent as you guys. So once she was at school and her teacher happened to take all those kids to uh, a place that was bigger than their classroom. And the minute they stepped in, they were quite amazed. They were quite surprised. So... Mary was all the more curious. So she started to explore the room. And as she went in, she saw different cupboards containing uh, volumes and volumes of old ancient books. And at one of the sections, she happened to encounter some very special books. As she was about to explore those books, her teacher came very close to her and told Mary. She said, yes, ma'am. She, the teacher asked, do you know what books are those? These are very, very special books. And the Mary was surprised. What's so special about that, ma'am? What's so special? And the teacher told, they are Vedas. Vedas in Sanskrit, it means knowledge. So it's a body of knowledge that you'll find here. And Mary was more curious like you guys to study more about them. So let's get started with the first topic, one of the oldest books in the world. As I told you, we've got Vedas, four of our Vedas, Rig Ved, Sam Ved, Yajur Ved and a third Ved. And Rig Ved was composed 3500 years ago. So that turns out to be the, thousand, the oldest and oldest book from thousands and thousands of years ago. So this Rig Ved has got thousands and thousands of hymns. For those who do not know what does hymn stand for, hymns basically means it's some religious song written in the praise of God. So it's called hymns. Or you call it hymns or you could call it sukta, which means well said. Right? So we've got these hymns in the praise of God, Goddess. And they, we had three gods, most important gods back then. I'll show you the picture. The first god that they worship was Indra. Generally, we used to worship the natural forces back then. So the first god they used to worship a lot, that is the god, warrior god, Indra. The second god they used to worship was Agni, the god of fire. And the third one was Soma, 
It's a very special plant. which is used and prepared, um, you know, uh, which is used for religious purpose and it's got a very special drink. Now, don't, don't, don't think about it the other way. So, we've got few of our gods here. They used to worship them because uh, the gods are whom we worship nowadays, they evolved much later in the later Vedic period. Earlier, we had this concept of, uh, you know, uh, practicing uh, the uh, the natural forces, uh, praising the natural forces, and of course worshiping the natural forces. So all these hymns, everything that's written in here, they were all prepared by the sages. Here, by the way, I wanted to show you this soma plant also. How does it look like? Like any other plant? So this is soma plant. So these all hymns, they were created, they were written, they were composed by the Rishi Muni, whom we also call as sages. So these learned people, they wrote all of that. And it was the priest who started to recite it. They often, like priest basically used to teach kids back then. So these uh, Vedas were not basically read as much as they were taught and learned. So it was something that everybody didn't have a copy back then. They, the gurus, that's a priest, they used to teach their kids all about it, explore every page and teach them about it. And the kids used to make a note of that. So it's learned bit by bit by all the people. And some of those Vedas have composition written and uh, written by the women also. As I told you, Rig Veda, it's written in Sanskrit, but please, please remember it has different kind of Sanskrit. The one that we use nowadays is quite different. Nowadays we find books that are written and printed, but back then those Rig Vedas, we didn't have a lot of copies. So basically people used to recite them, people used to hear them out. That's how we started to learn Vedas. But 200 years down the line, we happened to have the first copy, the printed form of these Vedas that was composed. The printed form came much later, earlier they were all written, handwritten, and we just had one copy that was used by the priest to teach the kids. So I told you one thing that's very important for you all to remember that they were composed by the learned people, sages or rishis, but they were taught by the priest. That's the difference. Now, how historians study Rig Veda, it's another topic that we need to explore today itself. Talk of historians, talk of archaeologists who study the objects related to the past. They found all this written source. They found books that we today call as Rig Veda and they started to study them. They started to study the hymns written in this Rig Veda. They were generally in the form of dialogue. And one of the most interesting dialogue that archaeologists found this. One of the most, most interesting hymn was a dialogue between a sage. This There's a dialogue going on, right? People are involved. So this was related to this sage whose name was Vishwamitra. And he's talking to two rivers that were worshipped as uh, God for religious purpose. First of the river is Bias, and the second one is Satluj. You can see it here. I'll show you on the map where we have this is Satluj, and here you find Bias. So one of the important component of uh, Vedas is Vishwamitra talking to two of the most worshipped rivers back then. Satluj and Vyas, if you have want to have a closer look, here we've got Vyas, here we've got Satluj. So Vishwamitra talking to these two rivers, having a dialogue. 
so moving on now of course the ca- the cattle they used the horses that they used and also the chariots this is a chariot it talks about about the story of how people lived in the past now how do we get to know as i told you rigveda is the source of information that all the historians and archaeologists were basically trying to refer in those rigvedas we find the reference of cattle horses the horses like here you can see they were yoked attached to those chariots that were used for battle purpose they were used to be uh, you, you know they were used to uh, fight in the battle because battles were basically fought on land we didn't have um, aircrafts and all back then they were also used to buy the farmers to grow crops and the food that they used to serve them if you've read uh, if you've watched the previous videos you know um, in harappan civilization we've got the uh, growth of barley, uh, barley we've seen that so this was consumed by the animals as well as by the human beings so as i told you these horses they were attached to the chariot and the uh, they happened to use them to explore new areas and also to capture them they were used in the battlefield so all the wealth that the people who fought they got that all wealth it went to the main rulers it was kept by some of the main important leaders and also as i told you priests were quite important back then and rest wealth it was distributed among the people that you take it that's okay this important component of this wealth apart from giving it to the leaders and to the priests and to the common people a part of this wealth was also used to perform yajnas now what does this yajnas means yajna is basically a sacrifice like here that we do nowadays this is yajna we perform a sacrifice in which we offer something to the fire to god fire and back then as i told you there was agni god who was worshiped so definitely they used to worship god by offering stuff to the god the god and goddesses they used to offer ghee nowadays we do the same some kind of grains and also animals were sacrificed so overall we learned that the battle in the battlefield it was basically the men who went there but i've not introduced you to any form of kingdom that existed back then so in the battlefield the men who went there they were basically the army people but there wasn't a regular army we didn't have the establishment of kingdoms back then there were some people who de- defeated uh, who defended their own community and among that community also they had uh, they had made selections that this person is going to be our leader he is quite skilled so the bravest person was basically uh, the one who got the authority to take most of the major decision and to protect and defend the other people so i think we've covered quite a lot we know now they we didn't have regular army back then in case you guys like the session please hit subscribe button and comment in below and don't forget to like i'll see you in the next class till we meet